Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming back. I am with the lovely goddess, Linda Coulter Burge. Hello, um, everyone. Our focus today are the stories we tell ourselves. And we're going to really unpack that. Um, we had such a, we always do a, a pre talk before we get into our uh, conversation. And Wow, I just, I really just want to thank Linda for uh, following her, her instincts and, and speaking her truth. This conversation is so important right now, we feel, um, because of all the financial turmoil that people are going through, um, which has been ongoing, but it's really being amplified right now. And how we equate who we are with what we do in the world and how much money we're making. And our intention today is to be able to unpack that so we can identify stories that are toxic and where we're selling ourselves short and how to come back to our true value. What would you like to say about this, Linda? Yeah, I, I kept hearing um, these auditory hits the stories we tell ourselves over and over again when I was talking about, or I was thinking about what we were going to talk about today. And um, I was like, okay, well, there's all kinds of stories we tell ourselves. Which stories do you want? <laughs> 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 you know, we tell our stories about our bodies and, and being more kind. We talked about being more kind about our judgments about our bodies. Um, and that is something that, you know, so many people deal with. And um, just being more appreciative. And, it, and I still, yeah, after all this time, I still have those little hang-ups that I look at and self-judge. And it, it was part of my, where are we judging ourselves? Where are we, what stories are we telling ourselves, you know? Are they true? Are they serving us? Are they harming us? Would you say those stories to your best friend? You know, um, and one of those stories that came up a lot as we were talking was the stories around money and value and self-worth. And with what's going on right now, um, there's a huge shift in our wealth or lack of wealth in this nation. And it's very scary for people. Mm -hmm. um, a side note of that is that I very deeply feel and my um, awareness coming through that this was coming was that this this financial devastation that's taking place this upheaval that we're seeing the um, instability is all part of a major shift a major reset that's taking place mm -hmm. and we are simply we have roles that we're playing in this and without this the shift can't take place mm -hmm. So being aware of it at a bigger level it does not put, put, put food on your table. It doesn't keep a roof over your head. Um, but, but understanding that it's not always going to be like this. Things are going to shift. And that what's happening right now is not based on your value as a human being. Yes, I uh, really feel that there are, in the forces that are in play right now, um, there is a huge opportunity for people to come into a greater clarity about what they're willing to take and what they're not willing to take. Mm -hmm. And who they are and who they thought they were. And this is 
because finances are connected into our root chakra, you know, it's our, it can be a root chakra as well as our, our second chakra, um, our water or sex chakra where you're doing, you're creating and you're flowing. Um, those are like the base chords of who we are in the world and how we function in the world. And the programming that we have been given for so long is, you know, the first time I meet you, well, so what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. Who you are is equated to what you do professionally or not so professionally, how well you do it, the income you're making. It's your, our personal identity has been connected in, um, I would say a toxic way to uh, money and to our career, which isn't saying money and career are toxic. It's saying our, the nature of our relationship to those elements have been really distorted for the purpose of control and manipulation and keeping people in line and keep, keep, keeping people distracted. And when you are struck at the core of your being, how am I gonna survive? the questions really start to shift. And I feel that there's so much, the buildup is so strong now that people are coming to their limit. And so there's an opportunity to um, have a new conversation and have a new value system emerge or to completely lose your hat, <laughs> we'll say, and just go, bonkers because you're so overwhelmed mm -hmm. and um, that's a very understandable reaction um, I've been there I have I've lived that more than once um, I have a great compassion for um, the transition we're in and I think that I think you know sharing our personal discoveries with that and our personal evolution is part of why we're able to talk about it and we're still in it but we've got some chunks down that if we can um, flip over in conversation and share them with people, it will, our goal is that it will help people feel supported and give them new options. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, for me, it, it, hits, it hits home because it brings back a lot of memories from experiences I had. You know, I was in the corporate world for a long time and um, I was always going for that next position. I was, you know, living for that next evaluation because my, my wages were dependent on that. My ability to um, transfer to better departments, you know, everything that um, gave me status, gave me financial well-being depended on what other people thought of my performance and who I was. It had absolutely nothing to do with the reality that is me. And I was playing a role to satisfy those needs, to get the rewards, to wear the golden handcuffs. Ooh, I love that, the golden handcuffs. <gasps> stay in the, the flow of things that were flowing downhill and I didn't even know it until a point where I sat in that corporate job and said, if I do this one more year, I won't be here anymore. Wow. I will die. And it was visceral. I was so unhappy. I was so miserable. I was making the most money I'd ever made in my life more than anyone I think probably in my family had ever made. Everyone was, I was the definition of success for my family. Mm. You know, um, everyone was so proud of me because I had gone so far without getting a real college education, without doing all the things that, you know, the rest of my family did. Um, in spite of all of those things, in spite of my inadequacies, I was able to do this. And so it was like, oh, I've overcome all this and there's my identity. I've made it. I am this thing that I have created, um, this position. Um, and if I stay here one day longer, one, you know, one month longer, 
I may not be here. I may pull out in front of a vehicle by accident just so I don't have to come to this job anymore. I may have a heart attack. I, I mean, something, I was so visceral that something was going to happen if I stayed. Mm -hmm. And um, and for me, I, I put my hands up for the first time and said, I don't know what to do. Guide me. You know, if there's somebody out there, guide me. I don't know what to do. I know I can't do this anymore. And I know there's a lot of people in that position that I don't know what to do and I'm not, you know, I'm surrendering. So I got guidance and I followed that guidance. Won't go into all the details, but I went from tech to non-tech as far away as it as I could possibly run and opened a business doing something I absolutely had no idea of how to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where I'm supposed to go. I opened a business as many people do with negotiation. I'll do this, but I want my income to be replaced in X amount of time. I'll do this. I just want to be successful at it. You know, don't let me fail at this. Please don't let me fail at this. Not this time. You know, I need to show this. Um, yeah, let and, me just hop in yeah. because I, I feel like there's um this correlation that I like there's so many juicy bits to this. Like you're being able to say, even though I had all these inadequacies because I didn't, you know, have a PhD or you know, like I didn't ring all those bells that our culture says you need to ring in order to be successful, lo and behold, I was the most successful person in my family. So I you got to prove to yourself that you're able to do it and defy defy those parameters and still hit this level of success what you call the golden handcuffs which i just think that's such a great that's such a great snapshot of like you know i i won the gold but it's in the shape of handcuffs and i'm bound and i'm i'm you know tied into something that i i feel like i'm a prisoner even though these are made of you know beautiful radiant gold um and then all of that underpinning of like well you're not worthy, you don't do enough, blah, blah, blah. That was still there. It was still there. And it flipped when you went into like, okay, now I'm going to do my own business. It's like, okay, so now it's about you showing up and you were able to make the system work for you and win in the system. Take all that away. Who are you now without all of the um, safety nets and, and the golden handcuffs of corporate world? Who are, who are you now? All of this stuff, all of those unresolved questions, all of that uh, wounded story about who you are now is getting to play itself out. And you're right. saying, but don't make me, I don't, and it's an external, right? You're, you're looking for someone else to make you as successful or not. Please don't let me fail. Mm -hmm. There's not, like, that's a, a disempowered statement, right? Right. Some forces out there, don't let me fail. And they're trying to, and what were the forces trying to say to you, Linda, in that conversation of don't let me fail, they were saying to you, but Linda. It sounds like a lesson you need to learn. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so this. Yeah. So, and, and I want to correct something. You know, I say I was the most successful. I was only the financially most successful probably at that point. You know, I, I think that I had, you know, that's only one level of measurement for success. And in a lot of my ways in my life, that was, I would not say I was successful, but financially on the books, it looked like I was doing great. And so when I rejected that and left, I took those stories with me of being good enough. And so I took them to running a business that I didn't know anything about and really set myself up in a situation that um, was almost destined for failure because I didn't, I just, I went so far from logic and so far from that to complete, complete de-analytics and trust. De-analytics? De-analytics. So... 
like anti-analytics. So it's so far into trust. And I see a lot of people who do that, who take that, who are very left brain analytical and reject it and go so far in the other way that that pendulum swings so far that they give up having a balanced um, view, a balanced registry of their world around them. And so they let the leave behind the, the, I'll say common sense, the, the part that says, now, wait a minute, is this really serving me to, I'm just going to trust it. I'm just going to throw everything into the, the ether and, and here I am world. I'm going to trust it. You know, it's one of those things you can't create something by sitting in your bedroom and meditating until it shows up. You actually have to do the work. Um, for it to show up. You have to take those steps. Well, for me, I, I know this is kind of getting a long story around here, but I had to go through everything that I went through because ultimately I was trying to discover who I was because I was really realizing that this, this creature that I had created living in a corporate world was not me. And I was trusting that I was going, uh, I, I remember distinctly saying, okay, I'll do this. Give me the lesson I need to learn. Careful what you ask for. <laughs> Careful what you ask for. Because that set me on this path of, okay, I have all these preconceived notions of what success is. I have to be successful in this business that I'm going into. I have to make money I have to do this I have to do that or I'm a failure and what does that mean to be a failure you know it doesn't it's not the same as I failed at something it means I'm a failure right. and so internalizing my value based on the outcome based on that external thing again giving me my value and as most people going into business do, I negotiated, like I said, you know, just replace my income. And as that didn't happen, it's like, well, there's a lesson that needs to be dug into. You know, what's that about? That safety net that you need. So, yeah, let's, let's unpack that a little bit yeah. right there. Where you're saying I was negotiating. And so I want to clarify that you're negotiating with the universe. Yes. You're saying, okay, universe, I will do this if this and the universe would be like hmm. hmm well we're actually going to push into that and you're not going to get that you're going to get the opposite of that are you who are you now right so it was like, i mean because i just want to clarify this because you yeah. have a conversation and i and i want to make sure we don't yeah yeah the chunks of it is that it's these these pieces where it's like i'm willing to trust you if i'm willing to trust you if Right. And that's not actually trust. It's, right. it's like, it's the core thing. They, your, your team, your guides, your angels mm -hmm. were seeking and did <laughs> get you to were like, I mean, this is my, this is my interpretation of it. And you get to clarify this mm -hmm. um, is you keep sabotaging yourself because this is the part where you don't own your power yeah you keep looking for us to give it to you or the world to give it to you or somebody to give it to you versus you owning it and right. as long as you keep ex seeking externally it's not going to be there what are you going to do now right uh, what would you say about that all the way to the point that i opened my business the month before 9 11 hit and for those youngins that don't know what 9-11 did to the economy, it plummeted it just like we're seeing now. Um, people were afraid to do, to spend money. And my business was a very frivolous, pampering business. And not frivolous, but it was not, very nurturing was, about self-care. It was nurturing and self-care, not frivolous. However, if you had to choose between safety and what I was doing, people chose safety and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you know, yeah. 
Yeah. So, they were in reaction state. They, they were, were in the reaction care. state, not in the self-care state. And, and it doesn't matter. I mean, that's just all part of that story. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, you know, I went through these negotiations as the business was failing um, that, you know, please don't let my bank account get below X amount. Okay, please don't let me bounce a check. I've never bounced a check in my life. Oh my God, I bounced a check. I'm a horrible person, right? So this, these stories just keep coming. Um, okay, my world is falling apart. Please don't let me have to, to borrow any money. That would be humiliating, right? No one's had to borrow money in the life of man, I don't think. So <laughs> That's I should not have to, before. Yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> and, and I can't ask for help. Like that was the hardest thing for me to do was ask for help, right? And... So I had to overcome that. I was like, oh, that sounds like another, you know, it's like, <laughs> there's another one we need to do. There's another. So don't do what now? Oh, okay. Right, we'll right, sure exactly. Let's we'll make sure we get that down. <laughs> and then the ultimate one was, okay, my life is falling apart. Everything that I thought I was doing, I did what you said, damn it. And, you know, and this is what I'm getting. Just don't let me file bankruptcy. Oh, don't file bankruptcy. Okay, she right, said she wants to file bankruptcy. Second, yeah, the second <laughs> I said that, it was like, shit. <laughs> well, shit, shit, shit. yeah, it's let, like, let and me, I knew like that. I the second I said it, it was like, oh, looks like there's another lesson in here. Because one of the things that I that I think is important for me to highlight for a moment is that the universe always hears what you're saying doesn't hear don't right if, you're saying, if your focus is bankruptcy is horrible the universe goes oh you want bankruptcy right because that's what you're focusing on you know you weren't like you weren't focusing on gosh it feels great to feel supported it feels great to reach out for help and receive help and doesn't that feel great it was like it's because the universe is going to say yes, yes. One. So you're like never this and the universe said oh you just said this Right. And that's that's what we right. hear. That's what you're 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 pulling in. You're pull, You're the one pulling it in for um, a reason. Your fear of it is attracting it to you, so you can learn something. We're here to support you in learning that. Right. And ah! yeah. And also, there was just such a visceral charge around that, like mm. that the fear, the 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 energy was all around. Don't make this happen. And as soon as I said it, it was like, okay. <laughs> here we go because at that point i kind of saw that pattern taking place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was like, yeah you were at that point you were like every time i say don't it happens right what you know so great um but and it did it came to fruition all of my fears every single fear that i had um came to fruition and you know, I was standing, I think the, the part that it really got to me was standing in bankruptcy court with all the self-judgment that, you know, I have failed. I am a failure. I am, you know, I have lost everything. I have taken my family. Yeah, that self-flogging was just yeah. in full on. And as I went through and I stood there and it was, and I'm standing before the judge, I had this like vision, this visceral vision of this beautiful woman named Karen that I worked with in the corporate world. And we were on a hike and it was in the midst of me going for gold. And um, her turning around on a walk and saying to me, Linda, when are you going to get it? You are not your latest raise. You are not your latest evaluation. You are you. When are you going to get that you're enough simply because you were born? And it was at that moment that it was like fast forward. It was like, I think it's like what people see at the end of their lives. I saw the entire pattern of me making that decision to walk away and saying, teach me the lesson I need to learn. 
that lesson was given to me way back when I had golden handcuffs. I could have listened. But it took me losing everything to get that I was enough simply because I was born. And I think the reason that's so important right now is that there are a lot of people who are feeling external pressure and internal pressure financially that have lost their jobs to no, you know, no reason of their own, who've lost their business, who are losing it, who are financially struggling, who may lose their home, who may lose the roof over their head, who may feel all these things being ripped from them. And my encouragement is to remember none of those things are you. You are a divine being that has come into this world enough simply because you were born. Yeah. And this is the chance for you to step back, remember your divineness, remember that we are all one, we are all connected. This is a time to focus on the stories that you're telling yourself about success, about what you really need in life, about what's important in life, about um, how you see yourself and those in your, your world. And, you know, look at things like, what am I, where are my judgments here? You know, I really had to look at where my, how, how have I been judging myself through this whole process? What am I afraid of? What can I let go of and be in the moment of instead? And I also, if I can hop in, yeah, um, I feel that it is, oh man, it's just, we have to understand that the worst thing that could ever happen can sometimes be the best thing that ever happens depending on how we choose to move through it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are some people, if they had hit your place of rock bottom, they would have just off themselves. They would, they, they would have said, the story would have won. I am a failure on every single level. I have disappointed my family. I have disappointed the world. There is no coming back from this. I'm mm -hmm. going to leave now because I am the epitome of failure and I will end it. And that is happening. Uh, that does happen in these times of financial crisis. There are people who lose everything and then they off themselves. And that is a completely understandable reaction. And I have no judgments for anybody that, that chooses that. Obviously, we are here to help people choose something else um, and to come through this. I think that if we can say, okay, what is the gift of this? I, even though it's hard, you're like, I've just been stabbed through the heart. What is the gift of this? You know, that's a hard moment. Mm -hmm. But if you can build that practice where you're like, this is just part one, there's another part two, there might be a part three, four, and five, I'm gonna stay with this so this evolution can happen through me and I can embody the change that I've actually been asking for. I thought it was out here, but it's actually in here. What can I do? And I think that this is not just a time of personal evolution. Like you're saying, we're all one, we're all connected. It's also a time of community evolution where the illusion is, oh, the government's gonna take care of us. The government has programs for us. You know, like, how much longer are you going to put your faith in the government or are you going to start reaching out to the people around you and let them reach out to you? Are we going to start taking care of each other and truly come together as a community and say, yeah, it's okay. I've got a place for you or I've got extra food or like I'm going to do something that my guidance is giving me to show up and network and foster community so that people have a sense of their isolation being broken and that what's happening to you is happening to many, and it's a chance for transformation. It's not a chance to double down in the story and let it destroy you. It's a chance to write a new story 
from a place of new boundaries, new discoveries, new values. I can't do the old one anymore. It will kill me. What else can I do? What else is available? And you start to evolve in that moment. Right. And I keep hearing the word resistance. And so I, I feel need to talk about the more we resist the shifts that are taking place, the more difficult it will be in our lives. A hundred percent. So understanding that we don't have all the answers, we don't know, but it's that trust thing. And it's also being in solidarity with your inner knowing and being in, in that strength. Because even after I had that knowing, I still self-flogged myself for years. You know, I, I had that on a regular schedule mm -hmm. of flogging myself of I took us here. And, and, it, and I realized it was from external feedback. You did this, right? Inside, it was, there was a part of me I had to accept that there was a part of me that believed it or it wouldn't have affected me, mm -hmm. right? I wouldn't have been, I would have said, that's nice. Keep thinking that, but that's okay. You, you, you go ahead and do that. But there's that Focus part of me. Secret. I'm fine over here. Right. I'm doing my thing. Um, I think there's a difference between self-evaluation and really taking a good look and what was my part in it and what wasn't, what were the lessons I learned. Those are all valuable things to evaluate when you're looking at the stories that you're telling yourself. Um, but when there's shame involved, when there's judgment involved, you know, really looking at that, is this, is it true? Is it serving me? Was this just, is this, am I just going through a lesson? Is this a lesson I need to learn? Is this a lesson I need to learn? I'm failing to learn uh, that I keep repeating. You know, those are all valid questions to ask. What is my part in this? You know, and um, and are, is this truly something that is hoisted on me and, and we can get into all the agreements before we get here and all of that. I'm not even going to get into that because that's different belief systems. It's just what's in front of me right now. What is my part in this right now? How am I responding to this right now that I have control over? Yeah, and I think that whether you understand this is something I agreed to experience before I came into this incarnation, or in this incarnation I completely created it um, of my own uh, unconscious volition, um, whether it was a wound that my family has been carrying and I chose to be the one who breaks the wound in our in our you know in our line, there's different you know experiences of that. And it always comes back down to the core of, yes, but what do you choose? What do you choose? Like in this moment, what are you going to then take forward or leave behind? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that in some way brings us up to, you know, where we are now in that you and I, um, gosh, we have been through a lot. And so we have a lot of empathy um, and, we are still seeing this, these dynamics in our lives. They don't have quite the same punch, but it's the same fist, <laughs> right? Like, you know, my, my experience of this is, you know, recently, I feel like you and I have both been in this slow down phase of like, slow down, slow down, slow down. Nope. How gentle can you be? Nope. How mm -hmm. soft can you be right now? And that's been our experience lately has been like, the more you just need to keep slowing down and it's like okay that's you know, but the more that we do that the more it's like oh here's that fist saying that like oh you wrote that word wrong how come you always do it's like no 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 mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not doing that this unconscious the way unconscious unconsciously still shows up in our internal dialogue being able to slow down and practice this gentleness we're able to say oh I'm afraid that when I get with this client right now, I'm not going to be able to 
teach what spirit wants to teach through me. I'm not going to be able to get out of the way and let the wisdom come. That's part of the same story of, well, you're not enough. Right. Not enough. Right. Right. And that, and that's, you know, as you know, because our world's also in turmoil a bit, you know, things are up in the air, just like everyone else. And yet it's not, yet there's this, this softness and stability in being okay with the instability in the shift that's taking place. Well, I feel like the turmoil, I mean, it sounds really, God, it sounds, and I'm not, it can be really taken as being spiritually superior <clears throat> because I would get really upset with people, you know, when they would talk about things being easy, things being soft and, you know, and I'd just be like, you have no idea what I'm going through. And from, you know, this point in my journey, I'm able to look back and say, I really defended my pain. I really defended my suffering. I really defended my turmoil. Like I defended my victim story. And it is that victim story, which again, I'm not putting judgments out on anyone's victim story because we're all affected with humanity. We've all been affected by um, the, the thought forms and belief systems that are on this planet. It's, that's part of the challenge of being here. It's part of the, you know, our soul's evolution gets to learn so much and gain so much through all this disconnection. And yet now at a certain point, it's like, okay, so I've done that and I've done that and I've done that. Gosh, that, that is really just the same old thing. What else is there besides reacting and saying, this is turmoil, this is turmoil. Like, well, that old analogy of like, you can either be in the tornado or you can come to the center of the tornado where it's calm and observe the tornado. And that's about learning those life skills so that we aren't in reaction to what mm -hmm. we're experiencing. And if we are in reaction, okay, I'm in reaction. There's some part of me that really believes something right here. There's some part of me that it's really in a story. If I can just slow down, pause, hold up for a moment, what's in play? What's the what is the dynamic here? What is the belief that's being acted out? What is the story that's in full swing? And now that I can see there's a story, do I have other options? Am I willing to be open to other options? Am I too pissed off to be open to other options? And you start to have that dialogue with yourself where you can be with yourself and not against yourself in that moment. Right. And, and, and I want to make clear that I'm not in any way saying, um, give yourself a lobotomy from emotion. Like no. the richness is in the, the, you, you need to acknowledge how you feel and be gentle and feel it and understand those are feelings. You can feel them and then you can step back in observation with those feelings and really find what are these feelings trying to tell me that I need. What is, it's like, I go back to this um, visual that my guides gave me several years ago. Um, this, whatever these pain points are, it's a distortion in truth. And the reason we're experiencing pain is because we are believing something that isn't true. I'm not worthy. I'm not valuable. I'm not good enough. And so what my guides were showing me were like these these wounds are distorted beliefs and they were calling them distortion babies. They're like, hold your distortion baby and talk to it and coo to it. And like, until you get through to the core of the distortion and you've resolved it and brought it back into a place of truth. But having this, like holding that pain, like a crying baby and being nurturing and paternal to that and walking yourself through the process is a great way of integrating whatever is there versus I can't believe that that's a bunch of crap. I can't believe it. It's like you start mm -hmm. doing that whole head narrative again and there's not a whole lot of compassion. Whatever works, works. Like if that works for you and it, <laughs> it sends you on your way, that's great. I just always want to, you know, give breath to um, the idea of being compassionate with ourselves because that's where the hooks can finally come off because you're able to stop 
that engaging. It's like, oh, I stopped engaging. I'm going to be really soft. And oh, this hook just came undone because I slowed down enough to be with it, to be present. And now there's an integration going on versus this dynamic where I'm mm, trying to make something change, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and that softness can look at, like a lot of different things. Sometimes it looks like boundaries. Oh, yes, right. And saying... Clear, distinct boundary. Yeah. I, there, there's a part where, you know, <laughs> I have a friend that I love her dearly and... and uh, uh, she'll shoot me if she hears this because I always say she's like five Name's foot Anne nothing. Marie. Anne Marie. I know, I five Marie. foot nothing. And uh, <laughs> I am not, I am five foot one. <laughs> 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 but I remember, you know, somebody really getting in her space and physically getting in her space and she'd go, your stuff, my stuff, your space, my space, you know. <laughs> and And I keep that in mind when I'm like, maneuvering in this world and mm. I have these these things thrown at me it's like am I going to choose that and take it in or am I going to let that be your stuff yeah I have my stuff you know that's, and as empaths that's the other thing we wanted to bring in this as empaths yeah. we tend to to hear and feel and absorb other people's stuff OPS other people's stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i think that's the you know i earlier i said you keep smoking that cigarette and that's kind of my been my analogy and which is not again not judging people who smoke because i'm not that's not what this is about but it's like it's like someone else having this thing where they're like don't you think so too like they're they're smoking on something it doesn't have to be a cigarette whatever that is that belief that thought and they're like and that's true because you're a terrible person right here's a cigarette you Breathe in from the cigarette that I'm breathing from that says you're a terrible person. Don't you want to, I'm in fear right now. Don't you want to be in fear with me? Like, oh, uh, actually you, that's yours. And I don't have to smoke that cigarette. You enjoy it. It seems to be working great for you, but um, I'm not gonna, I've got my stuff I'm doing. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah. And with empaths, it is, we feel it's almost our, it's an innate thing where we want to take on the other person's thing, feeling, emotion, so we can help them resolve it. And thus begins the slippery slope, downward spiral um, into <laughs> pain that uh, living in pain that's not ours and doesn't get right. us anywhere. And finding our value in helping others. Yeah, uh, you know. Oh. I cup. You know, being a our empathic coach. Yeah, we find ourselves. You know, I have to catch myself. Am I trying to fix this person? Am I just being present with this person, allowing them to? to go on their journey, which is it? Am I, you know, and that's a fine line to walk. Um, you know, I, I think bringing it back in, um, right now, some of the hardest things I had to do was ask for help. And for people to be okay asking for help when they need it, because what I learned in that is that there were a lot of people who said, why didn't you ask sooner? I was denying them the opportunity to help. Yeah. And so during this time, like take away the shame, take away the value of your external, you know, financial, wherever you are, you know? And, and you know, if you are doing fabulous, Awesome, you know, great. Absolutely. And and know that, you know, something could happen and tomorrow that could also be taken away. This too shall pass, you know, or that you're in terrible, dire need and tomorrow something can change. This too shall pass. We're just in states of being. We are not our experience. We are not our experience. And our experience comes to us as a co-creation and a magnetization to either things we have agreed to consciously or unconsciously as being true. So when we are faced with something and we don't like it, that's our opportunity to say, I don't like this, I can choose something else. And when you catch the story that says, oh, but it's always been like this, I've always had this problem, that's a red flag. 
or well, who am I to be happy? These people are suffering and I don't want to stand out and be happy while other, everybody else is going through something hard, red flag. And I know empathically, or I should say, I know that for myself as an empath, it took me years and years and years and years and years to learn um, that when I joined other people in their suffering, it, <laughs> it doesn't make my world a better place. Um, there can be a momentary connection where I'm with them in their pain. And that's the point where I, it's like, okay, I can feel the pain, but it's not for me to jump in and drown with them. So, oh my gosh, now you're drowning with somebody. Don't, don't you feel better that now someone's drowning with you? And they might, they might want to use me as a lifeboat. They might want to hold me under so they can sit on top of me and they can breathe while I'm now the one drowning. Like, wow, that was, what was a horrible choice I just made. And I gave my, my energy up. I became a battery. I let somebody drain me so they could feel better. So I could feel better. Cause if you feel good, then I can feel good. Cause my job is to make people feel better. Cause I'm an empath. And it's like, now I'm in a place where it's like, okay, I can be with you in the pain, but I'm listening. And I want you to know about you being an amazing person. I want you to know that you are powerful, that you are loved, that you are gorgeous, that you can create anything, that you're connected to the divine all the time. And here is this love being beamed into your old story so that it can break apart and your true self can start to emerge through what you thought was real. And it's just a thought. Yeah, very well said. And something came to mind um, as you were saying that, um, it was it was a story that I had shared with you uh, about um, a homeless person that I saw in Fort Collins often, and he would sit on the corner, um, and he it was it was he had the most beautiful eyes. What I saw about him was his eyes. And I think what most people saw about him was that he was missing his lower jaw on one side. And he was a vet and a, a, um, a bomb had gone off and he'd lost his lower jaw. And so his face was very disfigured, but he had beautiful eyes. And I walked by him one day in my own little world and kind of glanced over and I, there's like, as you, you kind of register things after the fact as I'm continuing to walk away. And I registered this look of his in these beautiful eyes saying, I'm right here. You know, I'm just look at me. I'm right here. And, you know, I was not in the financial position to do anything. I was walking down and I, literally got a bag of 25 cent popcorn because that's what I had in my pocket at the time. <laughs> and there was this newsstand that sold 25 cent popcorn. That was my lunch, you know, and I walked back with my bag of popcorn and I saw him again. And I thought, I can't just walk by this man. Uh, what do I have to offer him? He's got no bottom jaw. Can he even eat popcorn? I mean, this is what I have. And I, and I heard you can offer him your time. And, and so I sat down with him and I talked with him and we shared the popcorn and, and I just talked and I found out his story and I listened and he cried and he said, no one sat down and talked with me. No one has ever bothered to get to know who I am. Thank you. And so from that point on, whenever I saw him, you know, I'd make sure I had enough money to run in and grab, you know, I asked him what his favorite food was and he said cookies and there happened to be a cookie store. And so I would buy a cookie and throw some extra money in there if I had it. And I would always write on the bag some saying, I see you, you're enough, you're beautiful. I love your smile. I, I actually, the first thing I wrote on one was, I love your smile because he smiled with his eyes, you know? And I thought afterwards, it's like, I'm giving this man that has no bottom jaw, who can't even smile, a bag that says, I love your smile. And I'll tell you, when I gave that to him and he looked at it, his eyes just lit up. 
because what I was seeing was the band inside. And talk about circumstances. Sorry. I'm right there with you. Hitting somebody hard. The physical pain he was in, I could feel. The um, pain of not being seen. And all I could give him was, I care, I see you. Which and is... that was worth more than any money. Yeah. And I think that connection is what we need to remember with each other through all of this. I see you. Is, I see you. Yeah. Is I may not be able to help you, but I can be with you. I can I can reflect your divineness, your worth back to you. I can't walk the path for you or with you, but I can see you and love you mm -hmm. and know who you are inside of your struggle. Yeah. And, and do that for ourselves as well. Yeah. You know, realize that we're all one. We're all that, um, we're that man sitting on the corner. Yeah. Um, and, and remove that judgment and that, um, you know, because I, I will get angry. I'm very politically active. <laughs> and, and, I, and I still walk that line of being, um, for me, that's a boundary. It's like the boundary I work on constantly of where is my truth and where do I, am I going to engage or not? And how do I engage? And am I being reactive or being responsive? And I think those are questions that through this whole process, we ask ourselves and there isn't a right answer. There's a right answer for you. There's a truth for you. There you go. And, um, and really being able to listen and go deep. And I also, right before this, I was, it was like, well, how do you know? Like, I, like, how do you know when it, you're right in your, like, you're not telling yourself a story? How do you know when you're hitting that divine truth within you? Oh, yeah. Great question. And there's a couple things I think I got really clear with that is that generally there's not a lot of emotion or agenda. There's no agenda coming in those answers. There's no emotion. There's no fear. The emotion that you get, if any, is love and serenity as you come to those messages. So discernment, I just want to recap yeah. this. Um, when you experience the discernment of this is not a story, this is something that my people are giving me, my team is giving me, it does not have... Yeah, just say that it, it doesn't, doesn't have, have an what, agenda. Doesn't have an agenda. You know, um, it's not like if you if you feel yourself, if you can imagine yourself flipping a coin. That's and you're hoping it lands a certain way to get you know heads I do this tails I do that, and the universe is gonna flip it the way I you know oh I hope it's this you know and. Um, that whole process, you're not in alignment. You're not being quiet and going within because you have an agenda in that process. Being, so, go ahead. being open to saying, what is it that I need to know here? What is it the lesson that I need to learn here without the agenda and just listening? So there's a willingness to hear something that you may not want to hear. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that is the, the piece where it's like, you can tell me what I need to hear, 
I'm not going to be rooting for one side or the other. I'm going to pull out of that right now. I'm just going to make room to listen. And if it's something that my mind says is awful, I'm still open to hearing it. If it's something my mind says is wonderful, like I'm just going to be, I'm going to practice being neutral and not attach a value of good or bad to whatever you need to Mm -hmm. tell me. And if you keep getting these nudges and you keep ignoring them, you keep justifying them. You keep, yeah. you know, yeah, but I call them yabbits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. And, and these truths keep getting told to you, yeah, but um, whether it's a destructive relationship, whether it's, you know, I'm, I've got this great job and now I don't, or it's killing me to have this great job. <laughs> yeah, but I need this. Yeah, but this is a, this is a really good person. Yeah, but, yeah, but, and, and, and you keep getting poked with this nudge that's, that's telling you something that you don't want to hear. That's the time to listen in. Mm -hmm. And is there truth to that? Is there something I'm not willing to face? You are a great reflector for me of things that I'm not willing to face. And that, you know, I thought the dragonfly energy of holding it up and saying, isn't that wonderful that that keeps getting pointed out to you? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not wonderful. <laughs> but you're getting so close now because it keeps happening so much. You're really getting close to hearing it. Um, um, so yeah, I I don't know. That's that's part of I think listening, getting going inward during this time is a time of going inward. It really is for people. Yeah. Please listen. Wow more than ever and i think that's that's it right now it's getting really real with each other and remembering that even the person that makes you which of course doesn't make you do anything so changing our language right there being the person that i see in the morning on TV that will drive me crazy isn't driving me crazy. I'm driving myself crazy, Uh, Um, you know, in reacting. But remembering that even that person that is whoever, abusive, there's, you don't have to agree with that person. You don't have to condone that person. You don't have to absolve that person. Mm-hmm. And remember that that thought behind that person is a divine being playing a role. Right. And whatever's happening in this world right now, we're divine beings playing these roles. Yes. Um, and what is my role today? What am I doing today in this moment? Am I making my own personal world in the world that I present best that I can at the moment and am I willing to just be just be and be in observance be in love walk in beauty be in appreciation be in appreciation and gratitude for whatever I have Mm -hmm. um, and whomever I have And if I don't have those things, you know, can I find, if there's something out there that I just, I'm aching, you know, there's so many people aching for change and shift. My only advice for making that happen is finding that frequency in some other area in your life. Mm Mm-hmm so that you can draw yourself up and give yourself those reserves to have that frequency to attract what you do want. Yeah, I think it's a great, it's that um, dual thing of, I have to have these boundaries where I, I cannot keep on pushing myself, pushing, 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 pushing in order to survive because I've been doing it and now I've come to a certain place where the system doesn't, no matter how hard I would push, now the system is so broken 
that that doesn't even work at all. Like pushing, there's nothing to even push into because these job positions aren't available or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever that experience is, the things that had normally worked before simply don't even apply anymore. And now in the space of everything being so broken, who am I? What do I choose? Do I want the old system that was draining my energy and causing me to lead into burnout? So by the time I'm 50, I've got a bad back or even 30, you know, whatever it is, I beat myself so hard that now I have all these health conditions because I want to be successful. Wow. I can actually pull back and see that is a really toxic and possibly insane way of living. Is there another way I can do this where I'm able to receive support? I'm able to receive love. I'm able to receive community. I can do something that I enjoy and I have enough coming back to me where I can move forward and I have a relationship to my life versus I'm always in survival mode. What would it feel like to come out of survival and feel nourished by life? Gosh, the trees and the animals, when you go into nature, there's this whole ecosystem of, of things just showing up and everybody's, you know, getting what they need um, in terms of nature always having something that's always got, you know, giving back to its inhabitants in some way. Is there something I can do that emulates that now? Can we co-create that together? Can we always make sure we have each other's back? Can we always make sure that we are um, showing up in love and support? That's just a, me wanting to demo new questions as opposed to doing it the way I've done it before, which has led to so much um, additional suffering that maybe I didn't even need to do, but I thought I was supposed to be doing because that's what everyone's doing. It's the, you know, at least in America, it's the American way to burn yourself out. And once you're old enough to retire while your health conditions are so extreme from burning yourself out from working so hard that it's hard to enjoy your life, you, 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 know, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. To wrap this up, because I know yeah. we've gone way over for our normal time. Have we? You know, I think again, look at the stories that you're telling yourself. Look at the stories your body's telling you. Mm. We didn't even cover that, but oh yeah. Um, there's so many people dealing with inflammation right now in their bodies. What is that? You know, that out of balance. It, it, and where can we get back into balance in our lives as they are now as we travel through this? However, we can do that and bring that gratitude, that balance in through this process, wherever we can look at our stories and ask, is it true? Do I have judgments around it? Am I judging myself or others around this? What other, what other things can I take from this? How else can I have a relationship with this event? Because these are events. These are not. I am not my events in my life. And I think what I'm getting right now is how our lives and how our bodies, everything is a mirror, right? Mm -hmm. And when you are in denial, that's when you keep pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm not going to slow down because I got to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Oh, my body's in pain. I'm going to numb it out. Keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And I mean, that's, that's oftentimes a poem, a moment of transformation for people is when their bodies finally give out to a certain degree. And it's like, oh, I, I can't function at all. Now I have to completely stop. You'll hear those stories over and over again. Over. Of people who's, that was the transitioner, the transitionary moment of their life when their body was like, no more no more. You're not doing it this way anymore. Whether Mm -hmm. it was from a a disease or intense pain, whatever it was. And our bodies are reflecting back to us what our minds think are true. Mm -hmm. And our subconscious beliefs, our, our bodies, again, are these dynamic mirrors where it's such an opportunity to start to rewrite the default messages that we are, our, our bodies are reflecting back to us. And like, I have issues with my eyesight and my vision and I can go into victim mode over that. Or I can be like, wow, this is going to be a huge transformational pivot point for me. 
when I am able to really embody the healing and evolution of my eyesight and my vision, that's going to be a tremendous point of transformation. And I can flip that story around from, I have to deal with this every day where I've, you know, oh, I'm getting older and like, and all those other stories that can start to compile versus being like, nope, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm choosing to tune into the ever evolving revolution of my vision and my life and continue on a story of upliftment versus, well, this is the part where I will collapse down and believe that I'm less than or things are just this way or I have to struggle. What part is our body reflecting to us that's saying it's it doesn't have to be this way, but what are you willing to change? What are you willing to believe differently? What are you willing to heal? I think right. the body piece is very important. It is. So listen to your body, listen to your, your guidance. Be in gratitude. You know. And self-love and self-care. Self-love and self-care, that is like, that's how you listen to your guidance. Like, cause the, my question always is like, well, how do people listen to their guidance? Cause that's something, again, I had struggled with for years and years. And I'm you know, just now learning how to really embody that in a, in a much more consistent way. And it does come back down. Like I will just, well, that's a whole nother talk, but I just want to say self-care, self-love, those words you just said, gosh, you want to listen to what your guides are saying to you, start loving and treating yourself like uh, you're, valuable like you're precious like you are um divine because that's how our angels and guides see us and connect to us so if we want to start being able to hear them see yourself the way they see you as much as you can which is precious and worthy of love worthy of care worthy of slowing down worthy of being nurtured worthy of being unconditionally supported and Practice that and see where your triggers pop up about how, how and what you deserve. And that's, that's the work. It is. Well, now that we've solved all the world's problems. Oh, good. <laughs> We're just gifts. <laughs> Everything's better now. Um, <laughs> I look forward to hearing how other people experience this in their lives. I would love to see comments about that and stories and videos from people. Yeah. Please and how they're experiencing it. that. Yeah. Just be honest and say what's true for you. Share us, share with us your discoveries, share with us your challenges, share with us your heart. All right. I guess on that note. Thank you everybody. Thank you for that.